If you study an ICB, this is the typical format that you are going to get ICB questions. Uh, the video table, and basically, um, you don't have to have a master's degree to know that they want you to work out the PAYE STL remuneration, the UI remuneration, and the PAYE deduction. Okay, let's say then the first employee is Maurice. Um, Okay, sorry, should have started there. They said the first, the first employee is Godfrey, he's 24 years old, receives a basic salary of 4,700 rand a month, and nothing else. Then we have Gladys, 39 years old, salary of 8,450 rand, travel allowance of 950 rand. William, salary 6,000 rand, commission 426 rand. Sympathy, 42 years old, 70,225, basic salary, 2,300 travel allowance. Angela, 12,300 salary, 90 years old, 1,600 commission. Then they go, oh, this one was after that. Then they've got part-time employees, Maurice, works 20 hours per week, 7,200 basic salary. And Tony, 76 years old, works 25 hours per week. 9,562 rand salary. These salaries, as you will see in the um, in the heading, is for the month of April. Always take care to read the question from the first letter. They say the following payroll information is available for summer consultations for April 2021. That, that gives you a bit of information in the in the first place. First of all, they tell you this is payroll information. So if you didn't know this has to do with payroll, then that tells you this is payroll. They tell you it's for small consultation. So now we know um, who the company is. And then they say for, for April 2021. So automatically now you can see this is for the 2022 tax year. And that is important because now you know which tax tables we're going to use. So by the way, if you get a question um, in the exam specifically for the ICB students, if you get a question in the exam, they, uh, in the payroll exam, you will get all the tables and everything as well. I don't know about the HR exam. I don't know if payroll is included in that as well. Okay. The other thing I'm going to say, Gladys. Gladys uses a company car for 40% business purposes and sympathy traveled 95% for, for business purposes. And this tells us important things. Remember the 2080 rule. So if I'm asking the question, how much of the travel allowances will be included for Gladys and sympathy? How much travel allowance, how much of the travel allowance will be taxed for Gladys and sympathy? And that is not a question that I'm just asking someone for the heck of it. I now want you guys to participate. I want you guys to participate. So quickly check with me. How much am I going to um, include? For Gladys, and how much am I going to include for sympathy? Just percentages. I don't want to know. Um, I don't want to know. You don't have to do the calculations now. For, first of all, I just want percentages. How much of Gladys' travel allowance is going to be taxed, and how much of sympathy's travel allowance is going to be taxed? Gladys is. Okay, I see what's coming through. Um, so far, yeah, I see it's coming through. Okay. I don't want to say anything because I want everyone to, and don't find, don't just say something or someone else said it. Um, make up your own mind. Gladys, 80% and 20% will be taxed of sympathy because she's already used 80% of it. Of her travel. Okay. Okay. okay, guys. Okay, guys, um, yeah, like my student here in class said as well, 
Um, but all of you got it right. Landers will be taxed 80% and simply will be taxed 20%. What students do make a common mistake there is they say, okay, so Gladys will be taxed 40% and sympathy will be taxed 95%. Remember, that is not correct. You need to apply those percentages to the 80-20 rule. And according to the 80-20 rule, Gladys uses her company car or her travel allowance for 40% business purposes, which is less than 80%, so she will be taxed at 80%. And sympathy uses it for more than 80%, so he will be taxed on, I think it's a he, will be taxed on 20%. Okay, then. Maurice and Tony are part-time employees. Maurice and Tony are part-time employees. Okay, now this is important. Why is this important? Is there anyone out there that knows? Why is it important that I tell you Maurice and Tony of part-time employees. I haven't mentioned that. I want to see if someone else here knows. Yeah, they're not permanently employed, but why is that important? Um, Mishka, you are right. Elroy, not quite. Um, Mishka, no, you, you're right. Um, Christina, you're right as well, but can you elaborate a little bit on that? What do you think? How do they get taxed differently? You know. Okay, guys, I'm going to help you out here. Um, um, Charlene, no, not quite right. It has to do with the tax. Part-time employees is taxed at a flat rate of 25%. Part, uh, I don't know why, I just know that's the rule. Part-time employees are taxed at a 25% flat rate. Okay. And that means 25%, no rebates, no nothing. They are taxed at 25%. But now I see that my student in class is saying, oh, but that's not fair. Remember, always remember at the end of the year, your tax year end in this case is, 20, is 28 February 2022. By July 2022, tax filing season will open and you will get the chance to do the reconciliation. With your physical, when you submit your physical tax return, which means you, if you pay too much tax, then you get back. But if you don't pay enough, then you pay in. And the only reason why I think part-time employees is taxed at 25% is because they might have more than one job. And you, and if you have more than one job, your tax is usually too little when they deduct it according to the according to the way we work it out, because you only get one rebate. You only get primary rebate once. You don't get it for every single job. So so that's also a note. If you have more than more than one job, you need to work out your tax differently. Okay. And you would then apply what is called voluntary um, additional tax. So you would pay voluntary additional tax. You would basically ask your one employer to deduct more. Okay. Anyway, back to the calculations. HR is the full use of the company car. Great. Good for her. The car was bought on 1 April 2021 for a cash price of 273,000 rand, including that. Great stuff. That's the cost of the car. We don't have to worry about that because it already includes that. The car came with a maintenance plan of three years, 60,000 kilometers. Why is that important? 
Why, yeah, you're right. Why is that important? Guys, why do they tell me that part of information? And what does that mean? The car is a maintenance plan. What does that mean? Why is that important? Um, Mishka, you have got the right idea, but your percentages is wrong. Uh, for knowledge, no, uh, you're talking the percentage that she will be taxed at is always called the 80-20 rule, that 25, that maintenance plan means how much percentage we have to use for working out the determined value. Everyone is right, it is 3.25% and not 3.5%, okay. 3.25% and not 3.5%. Angela is expected to travel 10,000 kilometers in 2022 tax year, of which 7,200 is expected to be for business purposes. Using those figures, will she be taxed at 20% or 80%? Will we include 20% or 80% of the fringe benefit? Hmm. No one else. Only got one answer. Okay, so Charlene, which one are you now? De decide now. And why do you why do you decide on that one? So what, tell us why. Tell everyone why it is included at 80%. <laughs> Christina, you're right as well. Why? Explain that to us, please. Uh, no, you're wrong with that one. But you are right that you're gonna, you're gonna, uh, okay, guys. She traveled 7,200 kilometers for business. Total kilometers was 10,000. So you get 7,200 as the percentage of 10,000. So you say 7,200 divided by 10,000 times 100 to get your percentage. And that's going to give you 72%. And if a person travels less than 80% for business purposes, they are taxed at 80%. So always know if they said 7,200 kilometers was for private purposes, then what you have to do is you have to work out the business kilometers first by saying 10,000 minus 7,200. And then you would say 2,800 divided by 10,000, and that would give you 28%. Okay, so you guys understand now, to get the business kilometers traveled, you take your business kilometers divided by your total kilometers. Okay. And then they say, calculate the missing figures in the table presented above. Let's go back to the table. Let's start with Godfrey. Godfrey had a salary of 4,700 Rand. If you now use your knowledge that you know, how much of what is going to be included for PAY in SDL remuneration? Or can someone tell me what is PAY in SDL 
remuneration is going to be. Godfrey only receives the 4,700 Rand basic salary. Therefore, his PAY and his sale remuneration is going to be 4,700. Do you agree? And now I'm like sitting and waiting for some, someone to verbally answer, but I forgot you guys are not on whites. Do you agree? 4,700 Rand is going to be included in his salary. Okay. UI remuneration, is it going to be different? What's the difference between UI remuneration and PAY and ESL remuneration? No commission, no deductions. So, is UIA remuneration also going to be 4,700? You agree? Everyone agree? Guys, uh, please say yes or no. No, Charlene. I'm talking about UI remuneration. You're talking about the UI deduction. Remember, his UI deduction is based on his UI remuneration. So you are talking right, the 1% is involved, but the UI remuneration is what that 1% is going to be based on. And its UIS remuneration has worked out exactly the same as PAY and HDL remuneration, except that I do not include commissions and I do not deduct any deductions. So its UIS remuneration is not the 1%. The 1% is its UIS deduction. Remember, you guys have to, have to be careful now. There's remuneration and there's deductions. The remuneration is what the deduction is based on. Okay, cool. PMI deduction. Um, I can take you. You want to go there? There's the table. So now what you do, his, his income was 4,700 Rand. And now for that person that asked about the annualization, that 4,700 Rand was for April. That 4,700 Rand, would you guys agree that 4,700 Rand was for April? That 4,700 Rand was for April or 4,800, which means how many years or how many months are in a year? 12. So he does not get 4,700 Rand for the whole year. He gets 4,800 Rand for the month. So we need to take the 4,700 Rand and we need to multiply by 12. Sorry, guys, it's 4,700, not 4,800. We need to take the 4,700 and multiply it by 12. On each, what's that percentage? Just elaborate on that. We need to take the 4,700 and multiply by 12. Fifty-six thousand four hundred. Fifty-six thousand four hundred. Okay, so this person, Godfrey, gets fifty-six thousand four hundred rand per year. 
How are we going to work out these steps? Any idea? Um, I need to know you can't do that. You can't do that. I see what you did there, but you can't do that. So you're saying if it's 18% 18, 18 per year, 1.5% per month. Um, technically, that, that is correct. The answer is correct, but you're not going to get to the same answer because then you have to revert everything to monthly, and that's just going to make a whole mess of everything. So keep it with the 18% and multiply the 4,700, which is 12 months, so that you get the 56,400 for the year, and then you're going to take the 56,400 and you're going to multiply it by the 18%. Can someone give me an answer? 56,400 times 18%. Yeah, I think 10,152. 10,152. Okay. Is that the end of it? So is that his tax for the year? With what you know about tax now, is that going to be his tax for the year? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, I've got one wrong answer and one right answer. Relieving you too fast with UIA. Okay, 10,152 is his tax. That is his normal tax. From that, you have to deduct his rebate. How old is Godfrey? Somewhere in his 20s, I think. Okay. Godfrey is anyway, he is below 65. So Godfrey gets a primary rebate. The primary rebate is 15,714. Which means if we work out his tax to 10,000 and something and we deduct his rebate of 15,000 rand, we're going to get a negative amount of 5,000 rand. But a rebate cannot make you go into the negative. Take note of that. A rebate cannot make your tax negative, which means. Although his tax is only 10,152, we can only deduct 10,152, which means Godfrey is not going to pay tax. No tax for Godfrey. And in any way, you could have done this the fast way and say, okay, so he earns 56,400. That is indeed less than the 873 which is the threshold. Are you guys with me? Um, no, Lynn. no, 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 no. Remember, we are in April 2021. April 2021 falls into which tax year? Remember, a tax year runs from March to February the following year. The tax year is the year number of the following year. So April 2021 is in fact 
2022 tax year. Okay, but guys, I love these questions. Um, it's great because it, it means at least you guys are thinking. So don't ever, never, never, never think a question is stupid. It's only stupid if you don't ask it. Never keep quiet. Ask your questions. So good question. Yes, Bernard, you are exactly correct. If you are below the age of 65 and you earn up to 87,300 rand, you don't pay any tax. No tax. But remember, it's not always 87,300. It was 83,100 in 2021, and 79,000 in 2020, and 78,150 in 2019, and in 2023, it's more than 87,300, and so on and so on and so on. It will always be always go up because the receiver always mostly favors the taxpayer. Okay, it won't it won't go down from from eighty seven three hundred to eighty three one hundred again. Okay, great. Let's move. Gladys. Uh, I think there was a note about Gladys. Let's see. Oh, we said she includes a travel allowance at 80%. You remember that? Okay, so let's go back to Gladys. Um, now, to get to the person's question that said something about the 1% about UIF, the UIF deduction is now going to be 1% of the UIF remuneration, which was 4,700. So that is going to be 4 rank 70. Okay. Is it 47? 47. 1% is 47. Okay. Yeah, 1% you divide by 1, 2, 3. Okay. Right. And remember, the employer pays 1% as well. So that's also going to be 47. And the skills development clinic is also going to be 47. Okay. Gladys. So for her PAY and SL remuneration, are we going to include the basic salary? Yes, we are. 8,450. Are we going to include the 950 or are we going to include less? Remember, the travel allowance is 950. But according to the 8020 rule, we only include 80% of that. So we are going to only include 80% of the travel allowance. Anyone have an amount for me? Does everyone understand that? Does everyone understand that we're only going to include, okay, now. Green and Foranards. Um, I take it one of you, one of those amounts is, I've got a 600, 760, 760, yeah. then I've got a 784, I've got the 190. Okay, um, guys, what do you do? You take 950, you multiply it by 0.8. Or multiply by 80 divided by 100. 950 multiplied by 0.8 or multiplied by 80 over 900. Or 80 over 100, sorry. 80 over 100. That gives me 784. How do you guys get to 760?
रुलिंग शम यू कैलकुलेशन प्लीज If I say one fifty, nine hundred and fifty times point eight equals seven hundred and sixty. Um, what are laws? How did you get to that? I don't know. Is it you doing something wrong, or your calculator is doing something wrong? Nine hundred and fifty times point eight is not seven hundred and eighty-four. It's seven hundred and sixty. Just check that. Oh, did you make it 980? Okay, no, that's fine. Please don't make a mistake like that. You've got all the theory correct. Don't make a mistake like that in the exam. Please. Even if you got everything correct, always, always, always give them the calculation. Because if the final mark is two marks, then the examiner can say, okay, but you just used the one, the right amount. But you use the right percentage, then they might give you one mark or at least half a mark. Okay, great. So Gladys' salary is going to be eight thousand four hundred and fifty plus seven hundred and sixty, which is going to give me ten over there eight thousand. Yeah, I don't know, eight thousand four hundred fifty. Give me an answer, there, please. Nine thousand two hundred and ten. Nine thousand two hundred and ten. Thank you, Shunai. Nine thousand two hundred and ten for PAYE remuneration. Is the UIF remuneration going to be different? Is the UIF remuneration going to be different? Guys, that's the next question. I'm not with you in the exam. You're sitting in the exam now. The next question is you, you, you work out the UI remuneration. Help me. I don't know how to do it. Is it going to be the same? Is it going to be less? Is it going to be more? Okay, you said it's the same. Anyone else? Does does anyone agree with it? Does anyone disagree? Yes, you agree or yes, you disagree. Okay, cool, guys. It is going to be the same because that remuneration, HDL remuneration, does not include um, commission and the no deduction, so it's going to be exactly the same. Now, what is going to be the PAYE deduction. Remember, if you work out your PAYE deduction, do not, please, 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 please don't do this. Do not go in the exam and work out the remuneration again. Because I see it with the assignments a lot. People come and they work out the PAY still remuneration. They are not looking for the PAY deduction. Then they start right from the beginning again. Don't do that. Your PAY deduction must be based on your PAY remuneration. I'm going to start marking that wrong in the assignment. Your PAYE deduction must be based, your starting point for your PAYE deduction must be your PAYE remuneration. So we've just worked out my PAYE remuneration is 9,210. Yes, that's for the tax, but I'm saying you go to the tax. With the PAYE remuneration, you don't start working from the salary and the travel allowance and everything again. Use your PAYE remuneration as the starting point, and then you multiply it by 12, 
and then you go to the sliding scale. So we've got 9,210, multiply that by 12. You understand where I'm coming from? Some students would now have said, okay, now I need to work out the PR order and duration again. So start right at the beginning, 8,415 plus 760 is so much times 12. Don't do that. You've already got the PAY remuneration. Just use that. Okay, we're sitting with 110,250. Okay, yes, you're quite right. 110,250. At what rate is that taxed? At what rate is 110,520 taxed? You are indeed correct. It's 18%. 18% is the first bracket. It's everything up to 216,200. You don't have to study that tax table from by heart. You will be beginning that tax. I just know that because I deal with it so often. Okay, that gives me tax of 19,893 rand and is that the end of it all? Is that how much I'm going to pay? Or is that how much Gladys is going to pay? No. How much is Gladys going to pay? What do I still have to do? You guys, you, you can't just say yes or no. You have to motivate. The 14,714 guarantee. Yes, you deduct the rebates. How much is the rebate? Farnas, wait. Before we deannualize, we deduct the rebates. You're right. Deannualization is going to happen. But we're going to deduct the rebate. Um, Christina, what are you referring to? The sliding scale figure? No. Uh, no sliding scale figure. I'll get to one now where I'm going to show you the sliding scale sliding scale and um, calculation. This one, we worked out the tax as what you guys did there, 19,893 rand. Now we're gonna deduct the primary rebate. The primary rebate is 15,714. Okay, so we deduct the primary rebate of 15,714 from 19,893. That is going to give me somewhere in the region of 3,000 something or 4,000 something. 4,179 rand and 60 cents. Now, for an odd, you're going to de annualize. Now you're going to de annualize because that is the tax for the whole year. And how often do we deduct um, PAYE every month? So now we divide by 12. So annualization is taking the PAY ACL remuneration, multiplying by 12, and deannualizing is taking the any tax figure and dividing by 12. And that means that Gladys is going to pay 348 rand and 50 cents worth of tax. And that is not bad. On a salary of 800, of 800, 8,450 rand, she's going to pay 300 rand tax. Now, guys, you tell me. I mean, you say, you say income tax is so terrible. Really? No, we don't like paying taxes, but is there really something to complain about then? That's a misconception that people have about tax. 400 rand tax on 9,000 rand salary. Nice. That's not even 1%. Um, for those, I don't know if we're going to have time for that today, um, but otherwise we'll just do another, another session where we will do that specifically. I'm going to try, maybe we have time today, um, 
but I don't think we've got still a lot of things to go. We've still got this whole thing to go through because before I want to go on with deductions and stuff, I first want to make sure that you guys are okay with this. So maybe we'll do a, a shorter boot camp at another stage where we'll, we'll just look at comprehensive examples. Okay. Great, guys. William. William, 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 William received commission. Basic salary, 6,000 commission, 426. No travel allowance, no car allowance. I think the car allowance was for Angela. Car allowance was for Angela. Okay, there we go. Car allowance was for Angela. Okay, so we go back to William. Remember to always take note of the age, eh? Remember to always take note of the age. Age is going to make a difference when you get to rebates. Okay. William. PAYE STL remuneration. Still young. Okay, he's still young. Cool. Glad to say that. How much am I going to include for PAYE STL remuneration? Am I going to include the 6,000 and the full 426? Give me 6,426. Is everyone okay with that? It doesn't give the exact amount every month. Hmm? Does it give the 426 every month every month? Okay. Guys, um, a, a question that I just had, commission varies every month, eh? Commission is varied every month. Um, commission is based on, is a percentage based on a performance. So some people would get sales commission, some people would get performance commission. It's, based, it's a percentage based on performance. So you would get 1% of sales or something like that. So commission, the nature of commission is that it changes every month. Okay, so everyone agree PAYE STL remuneration is 6,426. What is UAS remuneration? The same or less? And if it's less, how much? Okay. Any other ideas? Okay, more ideas. Okay, guys, I am happy. I'm happy that you guys are talking about that, that you are guys, guys are saying that um, it is completely correct. Commissions does not include, is not included in UIS remuneration. So UIS remuneration is 6,000 rand. Okay. 6,000 rand. PAYE deduction. What is the first step? You can make a note of this. You can make a note of this. It's not on my slides, but I'll make you, I'll give you a tip. No. First step. Take the PAYE SDL remuneration. That's the first step. First step to work out the PAYE deduction is take the PAYE PL SDL remuneration. If you don't have a piece of pen, a, a piece of pen, a piece of paper and a pen, I'll give you 30 seconds, get one quickly. You're going to write this down. I'm going to give you the steps to work out PAYE deduction. I wonder if I have elevated music to play while you're getting your pains. Quickly, guys, get a piece of paper and a pen. I'm going to tell you. 
how to work out PAYE deduction. Exam tip. Okay, the first step. Calculate the PAYE SDL remuneration. Calculate the PAYE SDL remuneration. First step is calculate the PAYE SDL remuneration. Second step, annualize. Second step is annualize. How do we annualize? We multiply by 12. Annualize, we multiply by 12. Third step, add the bonus. We haven't dealt with the bonus any as, as far, but third step is add the bonus. Fourth step, go to the table. And that is not a tax table. We'll go to the tax table. Okay. Yeah, I'm not meaning go and have lunch. Okay. That was four. Five. Deduct the rebate or rebates. Six, deduct the medical aid tax credits. Seven, deannualize. And that means divide by 12. Okay, back to William. He gets 6,426 rand worth of PAYE SDL remuneration. So that's step one. Step two, annualize. How much is 6,426 times 12? Thank you. I need an amount though, 72,000. 72,000. Now I've got two options with 72,000 for a 52 year old male. I can either work out the tax, deduct the rebate, and come to the same conclusion as when I would have immediately gone to the threshold. Remember the thresholds? Remember the thresholds? Anyone under the age of 65 can earn up to 87,300 rand and pay no tax. So I could work out the whole calculation and everything, but in exams, it is often about saving time. So by knowing that that amount is going to be tax free. I don't have to do the whole calculation, and that is going to save me like three, four minutes, which is very, very important in an exam. And most of the times they will give you the thresholds in the exam anyway. So we will know that. No, you will be able to deduct that. Yes, you are quite right. Um, what is 77,000? No, 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 no. Where do you get 77,112? Um, no. Where do you get that? 
Goddess, where do you get the seven? No, 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 no. Why do you say 6,426 times 12 is? 77,112. 77,112. So where does that 70, okay, cool. That 77,112 is less than 87,300, which is the threshold. which means there's no tax. So now I have to ask, Charlene, where does that 72,000 come from? That 6,000 times 12. Remember, you need to include, yeah, okay. As long as you know, you made a mistake, but please don't make that mistake in the exam. Okay. Then we continue. Shall we continue? UI remuneration is how much? Six thousand rand. Well, are we busy with the PAY deduction? We said zero. We don't have to deanalyze anything. It's zero. Okay. Sympathy, sympathy, and 17,225 salary, 2,300 rand work of travel allowance. Remember, we said the travel allowance is only included at 20%. You still remember that? Um, that one there? Travel allowance was only included at 20%. 8020 rule. He traveled more than 80% for business purposes. So travel allowance only included at 20%. So how much is his PAYE HDL remuneration going to be? 17,225 plus 20% of 2,300, which is going to give me 4,600. 46, 460, man. 20% of 2,300 is 460, yeah. So we take 70,225 plus 460 is going to give me 17,685. Guys, please excuse me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm using... Um, much work for you, Work for you? No, you are in the wrong. I'm calculating in my head. Okay. Anyway, this um, something is going to receive 70,685 rand worth of settlement. How's the UIS remuneration going to change? Is it going to be the same? Is it going to be less? There's a trick here. A snag that we haven't discussed yet. UIS remuneration is limited. UIS remuneration is limited. There's a cap. I can't remember what the cap is at the moment. Go on to Google quickly. Go on to Google. Type into Google. UIS remuneration limit. 2022. I think it's 17,585 or something like that. UIS remuneration limit. Seventeen thousand seven hundred and twelve. UIS remuneration limit is. 17,712. UIF remuneration cannot be more than 17,712. But guys, you're making the mistake again. 
That figure you've got there, 177 rand and 12 cents, is not the UIS remuneration. It is the UIS deduction. Please don't make that mistake. The UIS remuneration is what the 1% is based on. So UIS remuneration times 1% equals 177 rand and 12 cents. So if you want to know what the UIF remuneration limit is, take that amount you've got there and divide it by 100. Or multiply by 100. And you will get UIF remuneration, the limit is 70,712. This limit changes year on year as well. To the benefit of who oh yeah, not necessarily the taxpayer. Okay, great. You guys understand? Do you guys understand? Do not mix up remuneration and deduction. Okay, now we get to the PAYE deduction. PAYE is based on first step, the PAYE remuneration. What was the PAYE remuneration? I think it was 17,685. 17,605. Don't go and work everything out from the beginning again. Please use the PAYE SDR remuneration, which you've already worked out. Yes, what's the second step? What's the second step? Annualize. How do we do that? How do we annualize? Multiply by 12. Give me 212,200. 212,200. Okay. What's the third step? Add the bonus. Okay, the question on the board is not asking this. But I am telling you now, let's change the question a bit. The person gets a 13th check as a bonus. This person gets a 13th check as a bonus. Anyone understand what that means? It gets added on to 13th check means they get their salary for a 13th time. So you're going to add the bonus of 17,225. That's what a 13th check means. If ever you get a a 13th check, it means you get your salary not 12 times for the number of months in the year, but for a 13th time as well. And that now leaves me with 229,445. And that is what I wanted to happen because that now puts me. Um, no. No, for the Lord. What was step two? Step two was analyze. Step three is add the bonus. You don't analyze again. You analyze in step two, and step three is just simply taking the 13th check and adding it. No analyzing again. Okay, cool. Now you know. Great. That now gives me 229,445. And I wanted that to happen because that now places me in the second bracket. And I wanted to specifically go to the second bracket because now I can show you how that is worked out. Can you see that now places me into the second bracket?
Okay. You guys see that? I'm now in the second bracket. Now, what is the? Oh, now it's step four. What was the fourth step? Let's go to the table. Go to the table. We have the table's first step. Um, deduct the rebates. Okay, fourth step. We still value with the fourth step. How do we now work out? We now take. No, we're not at a rebate yet. We have to work out the tax first. Okay, how do we work out the tax? Take your 229, 445, and deduct the last bracket's upper limit. So you take 229, 445, and you deduct the previous bracket's upper limit, which is 216,200. 229,445 minus 216,200 is going to give you around about 13,000 somewhere. 13,245. Okay, now that 13,245, you have multiplied by the percentage in the second bracket, which is 26%. That gives you no, there's no way that can be. What is 13,245 times 26%? Remember, it's times 0.26. Give me 3,443 and 70 cents. Okay. And now to that answer, to that answer, you now add. The 38,916. Are you guys with me? Okay, let me go through it again. I'm gonna go through it step by step. We've we've had the steps. We've had the steps. Zoom out of the steps and make a new step list. Okay. Taking the two, take the two hundred and twenty nine thousand four hundred and forty five. Twenty nine thousand four hundred and forty five. Determine in which bracket it falls. That's step two. Or step one is determine in which bracket it falls. So on your notepad, make like a, this is a pull out of notes. Step one, determine in which bracket your remuneration falls. Step two, deduct the upper limit of the previous bracket. In this case, the previous bracket's upper limit was 216,200. Guys, you've got to talk, talk to me. I've got to know if, you, if you're with me. If I need to slow down, please speak to me. Okay. So we take the 229,445. We deduct up the upper limit of the previous bracket, which is a 216,200. We get to an amount of 13,245. Now, step three, apply the percentage in the current bracket. Apply the percentage in the current bracket. So now you're going to take the 13,245 and you're going to multiply by 26%. Everyone still with me? No. Believe you multiply by 26. You need to multiply by 26%, 0, 0,26. Okay. 344, 3.70. 
And then now the next step, but I don't know if we have four or five now, but the next step is now add the fixed amount in the current bracket. Add the fixed amount in the current bracket. So we're now going to take that 344.3.70, and what are we going to what are we going to add to that? Tell me, because I want to know if you listen. I want to know if you understand. Yeah, so now you're giving me an answer, which is correct. So Charlene, you also read correct. Charmaine, you also correct. So now you also correct. Okay, guys, we're going to add 38,916. Okay. Let's try it again. Take me through. Let's go a little bit away from our calculation, from our example now, and take me through the following thing. My annualized remuneration, including a bonus, is 760 Rand. Tell me the steps to work out the tax. My annualized remuneration after the bonus is 760,000 Rand. Tell me the steps to work out the tax. 760,000 Rand. Don't give me the answer. Tell me the steps. Step one. Determine the bracket, okay? You call that one, which bracket are we in? I always like to say, call the bracket by its percentage. Then everyone know which one you're in. Okay, we're in the 39% bracket. Yes, you're right. Now, second step. Did what is the second step? Minus the highest amount of the tax. Right? It's a what is the second step? Okay, so do that. Show me your calculation, Joe. Don't just give me an answer. Everyone, um, I hope you guys are following. If you're not following, Please say that you don't understand again. Eh? Follow what's happening on the screen, please. Okay, Charlene, this is your example. Show me how we do that. Um, Um, check again, someone help her out. Did she make a mistake? Guys, the only way you're going to stop making mistakes like this is to practice. Just practice, 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 practice. That's the only way you're going to stop making mistakes. It's easy to make a mistake. If you practice, you won't make the mistakes anymore. Um, Charlene, what did you do now? No, 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 no. Yeah, you're confusing yourself. You take the 760,000 and you deduct the 613,600, which is the upper limit from the previous bracket. Yes, so deduct the 613,600 from the 760,000. That is going to give you an amount. I don't know what that amount is. So. One four six four hundred. Okay, I've got confirmation from the people in class. It is correct. Now, 
What do I do now? I think we're now at step three, or uh, I don't know. There's a step. What do I do now? No, 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 no. Now you take the amount that you got, 146 rand 400. Um, okay, but now, now I'm a little bit... Okay, so you, you've got now the 146,400. Everyone understands you get to 146,400. Yes. Now we apply the percentage in our selected bracket, which is 39%. So it is now 146,400 times 0.39. Do that. Guys, I know I'm loud, please excuse me. I'm not shouting at you. I'm just getting excited. 57,096. 96. Okay. And now, everyone that was so keen to add the 164, now you add the 164. Okay, so you get 50, 57,096, and now you add the 163,335. Okay, how much is that? Come on, guys, add with me. It's 22431. Okay, 224,31. Okay, back to our original steps. What do we do now? Yeah, I'm going to say this person is 67. Guys, I step out of example for now. This person is... 67. So what do I do now? Primary and secondary rebate. Yes, you are quite right. So I am now deducting 15,714 and 8,613. Is it one nine six one oh four? What now? What's the next step? Deduct any medical aid tax credits. Medical aid. No medical aid um, at this stage. Okay, after medical aid, what do we do? Deannualize. How do we deannualize? Divide by 12. So we know divide by 12. That stacks of 16,342. Now, guys, you remember the example I did with the bonus? What we did now, someone asked this right at the beginning, Fagnaz, I think it was you. What we did now with the bonus is we smoothed the tax. Which means we take the tax on the bonus and we divide it throughout the 12 months. So that if you get your bonus in, in December, you do not pay a lump sum on the bonus, 
Because remember, the, the tax on the bonus is going to be more because you don't get another rebate. So now we've taken that lump sum out of December and we've smoothed it over the rest of the year. Okay. That's what smoothing means. Okay, cool. I want to go to Angela. Last one. No, not last one. I want to go to Angela. Angela receives a basic salary, no travel allowance, commission, and she receives a company call. I want you to work out the fringe benefit on the company call. Work out the fringe benefit on the company call. Yes, Christina, um, the bonus, they can give it to you two ways. They can either tell you the person gets a bonus of so much, or they can tell you the, the person gets a 13th check. If they tell you the bonus is so much, then it means they get their normal annualized salary plus the amount. If they tell you the, the bonus is a 13th check, then it is the normal annualized salary plus one extra month salary. Okay. That's what a 13th 30, a 30 check is basically a bonus. But they can give it to you in two ways. They can either tell you this is a bonus or they can just say a 13th check. And you need to know 13th check means bonus. Okay. Guys, I'm asking about that one, um, and as you know by now, I love my steps, and you probably benefit from the steps as well. If we want to determine the, the fringe benefit value, first step, determine the cost of the vehicle. First step, grab your pieces of pens and paper. First step, for working out the fringe benefit on a company car. Determine the cost of the vehicle. Determine the cost of the vehicle. What is the cost of the vehicle in this case? Second step. Adjust to include that. Second step is adjust to include that. If you haven't joined me for that at any stage, how do you adjust for something to include that? You multiply by 1.15. You multiply by 1.15. If the vehicle was bought after 1 April 2018, then you multiply by 1.15. If it was bought before 1 April 2018, you multiply by 1.14. That's because on from 1 April 2018, the VAT rate increased from 14 to 15%. Okay, so the second step is adjust to include VAT. This one will really increase that. The third step, multiply by the percentage. Multiply by the percentage. The percentages I'm talking about is 3.5 or 3.25. When do I use 3.25? Got the three-year warranty or maintenance plan plus the four When do I use 3.25? If it includes a, a vehicle maintenance plan. Remember, vehicle maintenance plan, minimum three years, 60,000 kilometers. Does, does the
This vehicle include a maintenance plan. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to take 273,000 adjusted for VAT. It already includes VAT. Multiplied by 3.25, which gives me an amount. What is that amount? It is 75,000. Hey, yo. Rulin, you are way, 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 way off. You multiply probably by 3.25, by, I don't know what you, by 3.25, you might multiply by 3.25, you might multiply by 3.25%, which means it's 3.25 divided by 100. Eight thousand eight hundred seventy-two rand and fifty cents. Eight thousand eight hundred seventy-two rand and fifty cents. Is that possible? Yes, it is eight thousand eight hundred seventy-two. Yeah, it's up in the seventy rand and fifty cents. Okay. And now that that is the determined value of the fringe benefit. And now that you multiply by eighty or twenty percent. That you now multiply by eighty or twenty percent. Which am I going to use 80 or 20%? Eight. Guys, um, I was wrong. Previously, I said that per month, that is the value per year. Yeah, 20 per month. Got to be per year. 8,872 8, rand is per year. Anyway, it doesn't matter at this stage. Multiply it by the percentage. 80 or 20 percent. Eighty or twenty percent. Eighty percent. Yes. I'm using eighty percent because um Android uses the company cost for 72 percent business travel. So I'm using 80% to give me 7,098 rand. That is the value of the fringe benefit per year. Remember to now divide it by 12, because there's 12 months in a year. As far as I know. Five hundred and ninety-one rand and five and fifty cent, and that much is how much is going to be included in Angela's monthly remuneration. Guys, um, I'm glad you were with me today. Uh, we're going to do to end off. I'm going to do one more. This action, because I feel this is important. Okay, um, I wish I was so lucky, but I received a salary of 3.2 million without my PAYE. I'm 42 years old and I receive a yearly salary of 3.2 million. I am the CEO for ESCOM or something, I don't know. ESCOM. <laughs> okay, not ESCOM, Virgin Active or something like that. Anyway, I receive a salary of 3.2 million per year. What is my PAYE? 
I don't receive anything else, no total allowance, no car allowance, no commission, no nothing else, just the salary of 3.2 million a year. Come on, guys. PAYE. Tell me the steps. Don't give me an answer. Tell me the steps. Tell me the steps. Pull in the last bag, right? So you have to deduct the 3.2 million from the 1.6, then you get your amount. Uh, times that by the 45 percent, which is the amount that you get, plus the 587,000, that's what you get. That would, that's your back tax that you pay for the EPA, yeah, so going to the uh, and then you work out the probably with the rebate as well included. Okay, guys, if you don't want to tell me the steps, do you want to tell me? Okay, the person in class doesn't want to tell me, tell me the steps either. <laughs> Come on, guys. You're not on the spot. No one even knows, knows how you look or you can't embarrass yourself. What's the first step? 3.2 million minus 1.65 million 600,000. You're quite right. It's 1.543400. Yes, you're right. That's the, the second. The, it's one of the steps. What then? Then you add that amount to the 587,590. Um, Times 45%, I'm going to be with you. Times 45%, yes, you are right. Times 45%. That gives me 694,530. Yes. What then? Plus five hundred and eighty-seven, five hundred and ninety-three is correct, which gives me one hundred and one point two eight two million one hundred twenty-three. Your okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the tax on three point two million. Okay. Great. So on my 3.2 million, I'm going to pay 1.28 million tax. So can you see if you earn a lot, then tax is a lot. But if you earn a little, then tax is a little. Okay. Great. Is that the final sale? Am I going to pay 1.28 million? Um, you missed one step. What do I do after I've calculated the tax? Minus the rebate. Yes, you're quite right. How much is the rebate? Fifty thousand seven hundred fourteen. That is but a drop in the bucket if you pay one point two eight million. But hey, okay. okay. So you deduct the fifteen thousand seven hundred fourteen.
1.266 million. Mm -hmm. And now you can de annualize. One hundred five thousand five hundred fifty four rand and eight cents. And now I'm asking you if I had nothing else, I was receiving a salary of three point two million for the year. My tax is one hundred five thousand five hundred thirty four rand. If there was no deductions, nothing else, how much would I be in my bank account? Tricky question. Let's see if you can work that out. If there was nothing else, plain salary, plain deduction, how much would I get in my bank account? What do I do? What do I have to do first? It's a three point two million divided by twelve because it's twelve. First, you have to determine what my monthly salary is because I don't get paid only once a year. I get paid every month. I would not like it if I only get once a payment once a year. So, what is my monthly salary? Three point two million divided by twelve. Guys, quickly work out 3.2 million divided by 12. 266,666. 266,666. 266,666. 266,666. Mm. Okay. So that is my salary per month. From that, I now deduct my DAYE, which is 105,534.08. How much is that? 161, 13259. Is that what I'm getting paid? Yes or no? Why do you say no? Charlene, why do you say no? Ah, uh -huh. thank you for that one. U I F. <laughs> UIF, thank you for that one. Great picking up on that one. What is the UIF? How much is the UIF? Yeah, 177.15 or something like that. Great. Guys, it has been absolutely wonderful having you today. Before you run off, I'm going to release another another few questions on the poll. Um, please don't run off without filling this in. Um, yeah, I hope you guys had as much fun as I had. Um, we will definitely do, I will definitely do this a lot more um, every month. And for that, I need you guys to to um, send me emails and to say, this is what we would like to do and all sort of stuff. Remember in the end, we can only do the stuff if you tell us you want it to be done. So please, yeah, do that. And also in future, um, you're allowed to, to ask people to join if you know someone is doing it's doing the subject or just one of yeah, it's, it's not limited just to, to to you guys. You can tell your friends, you can share the link, that sort of thing. It's, a, it's just it's just a service that we offer. And yeah. But you, you will see that the polls are released and um, please fill in the polls. I do take it, not to, for training purposes, but um, I do take it into mind into mind when I um, start my new courses and whatever. Also, guys, um, lectures during the week, 
if you can't join them during the, during the evening, you can watch them. It's not someone else that presents them. It's going to be me that presents them. So you had a feeling now for how I do it. It's exactly the same. Um, if you want the, the um, material of today, please send me an email. Where is that? There we go. Send me an email tomorrow morning, Monday morning. You can send it tomorrow, but I'm not going to answer it tomorrow. Um, support at college.optimi.co.za. Uh, you're welcome to go and check out our Facebook page. And please, this is very important, go and check out our lectures, change on an update Facebook group. And do not forget to join it. When you, when you join it, you can you can ask questions on there, that sort of thing. And they just need to become part of the part of our family. Anyway, guys, um, it's been lovely having you guys. Um, and I hope to see you guys very soon again. You must, if you're going to watch the Grand Prix this afternoon and tomorrow, you must enjoy that. If you're going to watch rugby, enjoy that. If you're going to have like a braai or whatever you're going to do, just enjoy whatever you're doing. And remember to enjoy the subjects as well. Don't just study. Enjoy what you're doing. Thanks a lot. I will see you in the future. Cheers. Thank you, ma'am. I'll just open for you. I'm going to be very happy to see you. Thank you very much.